What if it was possible to have local fresh groceries delivered right to your door? Think of all the free time you'd have. Well, Instacart gives unlimited grocery delivery for one low monthly fee. Forgot that special ingredient in your favorite dish? Instacart can deliver it to your front door in as fast as one hour. You can shop multiple stores, see deals in your area, and save time and money. I've been using Instacart for over three years. I started using them in Arizona, and I'm using them here in Florida. I love the time-saving convenience. They pick the freshest products, and they keep my eggs safe, too. To receive your first delivery free, follow the link in the show notes so that Instacart knows that we sent you and to help support the show. Instacart, never step foot in a grocery store again. Welcome to Empowered Within, a soul-quenching, transformational podcast that will set your soul on fire. Through candid and inspiring conversations, leading experts, celebrities, healers, and I share our journeys of how we've overcome challenges to living an empowered life from within. I'm your host, Jennifer Pilates. Welcome to another episode of Empowered Within. Hi there, and welcome to the show. Today's guest is Tandy Gutierrez. She is the founder and creator of Unicorn Wellness, an online studio that has bringing a unique blend of wellness and fitness around the world since 2013. Tandy has 20 plus years in the wellness and fitness industry, having been recognized as one of the nation's foremost Pilates experts by L17 Self and Allure magazine. Tandy creates a unique blend of fitness and introspection through mediums like tarot and her capabilities as an intuitive psychic. She has created a wonderful community of thousands of women that are able to support each other through wellness journeys while creating a positive change in the world along the way. Welcome to the show, Tandy. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I'm so excited. So everyone, we've been talking. We basically just had a show off air, which was so much fun. Oh my goodness. So you'll have friends now. I know we're BFFs. We're soul sisters, the whole nine yard kindred spirits. So let's talk about Tandy. How did this all begin for you? How did you go from being a professional dancer to finding yourself in the wellness industry and becoming Miss Unicorn? It's a journey for sure that continues every day, but the basic storyline of it is, is that I was a professional dancer and performer. Um, Every performer at some point, you know, bartends, waits tables, and I did that for a long time and really loved the industry, but it's hard on your body and energetically very depleting and kind of upside down, right? You're Mm -hmm. like out late at night and then sleeping in the day, and then you're trying to get ready for a show or trying to get ready for an audition. And the universe really presented me with a path very much out of the gate. I was offered opportunities to teach Pilates at like a really early stage. It was never my intention. Truth be told, I hated the format. I did not love (laughs) it. I didn't like it. Um, Pilates, people's heads everywhere just exploded. (laughs) Oh, I'm totally the black sheep of like the Pilates community in Mm -hmm. a lot of ways um, because I hated it. And I was willing to say that and be like, you know, y'all drank the Kool-Aid maybe a little too much, but it was a part of my dance program. And so I had been practicing Pilates since the age of 18 and it had been five years that it was like in my vessel, right? That muscle memory was there and the knowledge was there. And this is kind of in the way back machine, right? Like I'm 43. This was right as it was coming on to the fitness and Mm -hmm. wellness scene per se. So most people didn't know it and they certainly didn't know the content like I did. And I had a job at a fitness facility. They offered to pay for my certification. I mean, the universe really just put the pieces in play. And I I do feel grateful enough that I picked them up along the way. I think the fact that I hated the format makes me an excellent teacher because I know the resistances and the downfalls Mm -hmm. of it. Um, But I started teaching part-time and that, grew on its own, right? Like the universe was very clear about my path, even though I was totally confused. And I just kept being asked to teach. I taught some group fitness things. Then people would ask me to train them privately. I was like, I'm not, I'm not certified for that. And they were like, we don't care. And so I thought, okay, I need to go get certified to do that. Mm -hmm. So I transitioned into teaching Pilates part-time 
as a performer. It was much more rewarding. It was much easier on the vessel, the, your right side up and your circadian rhythms. And it made sense. And it started to make so much sense that I started choosing being there over going to auditions. And it was really originally a choice for myself. Being a female in the performance industry is hard. You are told you are not enough at every turn. And all of the icky stories have absolutely happened to me. And it was, you know, that feeling of being rejected over and over and over. And I was like, why am I doing this? Meanwhile, I could be in the studio helping people right. and seeing how empowered they become by getting more comfortable in their own vessel because the Pilates work is rehab, right? It's inherently healing. And I was always in fitness facilities. And so the Pilates studios tend to end up with people who are injured and the other coaches don't know what to do with them. And so it was, I mean, the work I've done has always been in healing, but I started to see how much it heals someone's soul to make peace with their vessel, to learn how to work with it rather than against it, to back off, to go slower, to be more gentle, to celebrate like the teeny tiny wins mm -hmm. in things. Sure. And so that rolled for many, many years. And then my husband just had this crazy idea, crazy idea to launch an online offering in 2013. And that was clearly not in the pandemic. Everyone thought I'd lost my mind, kind of did a little bit, <laughs> um, but we wanted to make it accessible. I was in an industry that was super elite and very high price point, celebrity clients, celebrity clientele, and it was cool, but it also was frustrating. And so we took a chance on launching an online offering and it was not simple. It was not overnight. It still hasn't been, it's been a labor of love that has grown and supported itself as we've gone. But the further I've leaned into intuition, the further that I've leaned into spirit and the messaging of what to offer and where to turn, the better it gets at every moment. That is a beautiful story. So did you discover your intuitive psychic abilities during all of this transition? How did you realize like, oh, wait, if I lean into this, what is this? Yes. And so again, I wish there was like a, there is a moment in my life when we moved to Austin the second time we moved into a haunted house. And the universe again was, I mean, we didn't know it when we moved into it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but we moved. And so the major moment of transition for my career path in this was that we were unpacking boxes and we have tons of books and bookshelves. And all of a sudden there was a deck of tarot cards that I'd had when I was in my teens. I mean, I hadn't seen it in years mm -hmm. and, but the cards had been separated. They were shoved in books. So it was like discovering, like the universe was like pushing cards at me mm -hmm. And so that was really a transformative year of calling me majorly into the astrology, majorly into um, meditation and majorly into the cards. And I was practicing with myself and then would bring it in with pri private clients. And then the universe got pushy in meditation about putting it on the site forward facing. And that was terrifying. And it, it was hard because I had to come out of the woo woo closet you know, right. But those first moments of knowing were really in my teens. Um, I had a very traumatic upbringing in all the ways. And the person I relied on was myself in those places and spaces. But looking back and knowing now it was really spirit that was so very loud. And I trusted that inner voice. I don't have a great like story for that. I just always trusted that because the grownups around me weren't trustworthy. Mm -hmm. And that allowed me to lean into those quiet whispers that didn't totally make sense cerebrally on the pro-con list, but I knew were a right fit for me. And I've just always been very diligent in doing that. But that period of time when the cards came back, it, it was that expansion. It was the awakening mm -hmm. of it was so loud. I couldn't ignore it. Oh, wow. Are you ready to lose inches, increase strength, and tone your body from head to toe? 
Are you ready for a total body, mind, and spirit transformation? I am excited to announce that I am launching my exclusive eight-week Pilates Return to Life training program. This will give you an opportunity to have a total body, mind, and spirit transformation of health and wellness to a new lifestyle. Imagine in seven days you will feel a difference, in 14 days you will see a difference, and in eight weeks you will have your new Pilates body. So what do you say? Want to join me on the mat? Head over to jenniferpilates.com today. Space is limited. Use a special promo code EW and the word special, EW special to receive $200 off while space is available. Head on over to jenniferpilates.com and I'll see you on the mat. That's incredible. And the haunted house, what happened with that? I mean, was, we can't just gloss man, over that. I know, right? <laughs> well, it really was a haunted house. My sons at that time were four and eight, and they're my kids. They're super witchy wooey too. But we just had all these instances where my youngest would wake up in the morning and be like, oh, the guy that lives, you know, like in my room told me this thing. And we're like, okay. You know, we would have a lot of issues with devices Mm because, you know, frequency and electronics. Sure. Um, We had, you know, iPads that would turn on in the middle of the night, like that were nowhere near anybody. I mean, like it it was a lot of those things. Um, My phone, I I woke up with a crack in my phone one morning and then my youngest was mom. He, He didn't mean to break it. He just thought it was really interesting. Like I woke up to at like three in the morning this like it was like an Australian radio show that I couldn't figure out like how it was playing on my phone and I noticed that the phone was cracked and I was like what the hell is going on because it wasn't necessarily someone trying to get messaging but they wanted to be known and they were like playing fiddling with stuff Mm -hmm. you know there were animals literally in the walls of that house it was like a thing it was just one after one, but it was mostly my, my kids who were like having extreme dreams, like would say that they were talking to people and a lot of electronics getting cracked or broken or turning off and on at really weird times. And we had a teapot explode that my husband and I were like, like he was in the kitchen pouring hot water into a tea kettle. Now I get it. Like I, I totally understand like heat. I've had like bottoms of glasses blow out before. Sure. But this was, it wasn't totally steaming and it just, it was, it was really crazy. It was not normal. And so it was just a lot of frequency in that house. It was come to find out an old, you know, we were on old plantation land and it was houses where a lot of slaves had died. Yeah. Like it was, I don't know that it was burial grounds, but it was kind of close to that. Mm -hmm. And so there was just so much on the property that, you know, again, I had tarot cards throwing themselves at me. I could hear things in the walls. You know, we had, I mean, there's just story after story of this house that like spirit was just presenting itself and, you know, needing to manage, like, is this okay? What can I learn from this? How do I protect myself? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that's a challenge. That's a challenge in itself right there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh. What did it talk about being thrown into the throes of the spiritual world? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, well, I mean, seriously, we had a a black tourmaline that I could hear. It sounded like I could hear radio frequency. Mm -hmm. And I was that one tripped me out because I was like, that is not possible. That's effed up. There might actually be something wrong with me because I'm hearing things like actual. And I would cleansed it. I'd done all the things you're supposed to do. I buried it. And every time I pulled it back out, it happened. And so finally, one day, I got really creeped out and I left it in the parking lot at the Whole Foods in Austin. And like, I just left it. I was like, it was in a planter pot. I put it in the dirt, like on the top. But I was like, I just can't. I just, this is making me feel crazy. Yeah. Four days later, my husband and son went to Whole Foods and my son comes back and he's like, mom, I found this crystal in the parking lot. (laughs) Oh my. And I was like, um, okay. I left that one there four days ago. 
so I mean it was like spirit was like knocking on the door. seriously I mean holy initiation wow oh my yeah. gosh so this is a perfect you know segue into how did you begin to define and recognize the benefits of bringing the metaphysical world in with your wellness and workout world mm. Well, I have, you know, also an autoimmune story of disorder and dis-ease in the vessel for sure. I had been a fan and still am um, of Louise L. Hayes' work. She is my personal hero. And so I had read her book, gosh, I think like when I was 18, 19, like, but didn't fully understand how to implement it and hadn't delved completely, but it resonated a whole lot. And so then you know, fast forward into when it was really being pushed of like, how is this going to help things? You know, it was, I, I don't know how to say it other than I just kept listening and kept trying and everything kept getting better for me personally. I definitely managed depression and anxiety. It used to be really bad. And anytime that I had taken antidepressants or medication, it, it made it worse. It just, made it worse. And so I was desperate earnestly mm -hmm. for things that would help create an upswing, create stabilities for me in all the ways. And the further I leaned into spirit, the further I understood astrology, when I began to integrate the cycles into my movement patterns, everything shifted for me, literally. I, like my system just calmed down. And I just felt better. And I was committed to it enough to go, well, if I feel better, again, placebo or not, I'm going to keep doing that because I've done a thousand things that didn't work, didn't create upswing or made me feel worse. And so then the true test is, right, you take it to your clients. Well, okay, it works for me and I'm connecting with it, but does it work for anybody else? Does it resonate with anybody else? Right. And it just started to prove itself over and over that with these cycles and overlays of movement, of meditation, of the astrology, of the tarot, the clients were making breakthroughs and creating progress and healing in ways they never had. And I'd been teaching and coaching, you know, 12 plus years before I integrated any of this to the work. And I just started to see how quickly they evolved and how much more calmly those transitions were when we were dealing with their heart centric spaces and energetic spaces. I mean, we know that all of our healing is going to happen on the inside at a soul, at an emotional and potentially an intellectual level. And, but the vessel still matters, but this combination was just easy and powerful and calming and just felt like joy. That sounds amazing. So can you walk me through, cause now is this in groups? Is this one-on-one? -on -one? Is it both? So our, this is, mm, our membership is all online. So it's unicornwellnessstudio.com and it's been this way since 2013. So it's a membership that I have recorded content, movement patterns for them, workouts that are macro and micro cycled within a four week cycle. So members go and log on and they can be totally on their own in this process, right? Um, there's also a guided meditation, new and full moon tarot readings and new and full moon energy forecasts. So it's a membership, it's an online studio. We also have a really loving, deep community. And so we've had a Facebook group forever, you know, and I did used to facilitate some one-on-ones, but mostly this was just through social connection, right? And them logging in. I do facilitate mentoring, magical mentoring one-on-one -on -one and as a group, but this is separate from the movement membership. Okay, got it. Love that. So how would, if you and I were going to implement, say, a one-on-one -on -one session, does that in combine movement and I'm going to do your tarot and we're going to look at where you are in the moon cycle? Like, how does that, because I have this whole picture in my head. I'm wondering if that's reality or not. <laughs> well, it's, it, it's probably not because it is an interesting setup. It's not mm -hmm. a typical traditional setup. So if you wanted to work with me, I would first, you know, we might connect in social, we connect here, we connect an email, a friend introduces you, you always head towards the membership in the studio first. And it's a just press play sort of scenario. And so you kind of go in and explore, get on the mat, see if that works. Um, 
the foundation of the work is in the physical movement. And so what I like and prefer is for clients to be on the map for three months for a period of time. You don't need to be great at it. You don't need to know anything, right? They're all mixed level classes. You just start showing up for yourself and showing up for the practice. Then to work one-on-one with me is magical mentoring. And it happens twice a year. And I take six to seven private clients for a four month period of time. And we have a very long conversation about an hour long. What are your goals? What do you feel like your trip ups are? What's the hill you keep dying on? What are you trying to move past? And I will sit and listen deeply and start to pull out like where I think things are headed or where the root is. We decide on a question that the, we then pose to the tarot. And so then I'll do a five card tarot reading. And from that reading is a channel to do list that then you as a client would implement in the next four weeks. And so we have a check-in call about halfway through 75 minutes again, like, have you done these things? Yes or no, no emotional baggage to it. Just checking in accountability, Right. then going through what's inspiring you, what's motivating you, what's keeping you grounded. What have you manifested? What's the good stuff in this cycle? And then transitioning into what are you resisting? What's brewing anger, frustration, sadness. And then from that phone call, we pull out the question that we ask in the next cycle. And then it repeats. And so the movement pattern is the foundation. My clients, hands down, progress and heal. And I know it's not about speed, but they really do it faster. They accomplish incredible things in a four month period of time because their physical vessel is getting that energetic clean sweep and they're in connection with the vessel and therefore with their soul. Mm -hmm. So the movement practice kind of runs in the background as a foundation. Mm -hmm. And then we aim into those other pieces, but the to-dos that come from the tarot channeled from spirit could be anything. They're very often personal mantras, um, particular movement patterns that they would like you to be practicing to help you in your healing. Right. So it's, it's from bottom to top, so to speak in the practice. Very interesting. So now when someone does go into the online membership area, is that something that you're, you continually add new videos to or, okay. Yes. So right now we have like, it's a 12 month cycle. So all of the movement patterns are written in accordance to the current lunar cycle and to the current Zodiac energy. So each, you know, sign of the Zodiac governs a certain body part. There's going to be certain energies that we're continually working with in that time period. And so the workout patterns, the movement patterns speak to balancing and harnessing those energetics. Very cool. Very intriguing. Okay. Even more so mind blow than what I had envisioned in my mind when I was making up the whole story. I love it. Right. No, it's be, but it is also very unique, right? Like this is not a typical setup. We've had a membership based program for forever. I've always had private clients on the back end. Um, It's not necessary to work with me one-on-one at all for major Mm -hmm. upswing and healing. When you get into movement patterns with the cycles energetically, we've cultivated practices for people that are like, I've never had a movement practice for this long, this sustainably ever, you know, and it's really not about manipulation of the vessel. This is not about making a body look a certain way. This is about embodiment. This is about making peace, learning how to work with the vessel versus against it. This is about our mental health. This is about our energetic health. And it's a different perspective on it. Right, totally. So for listeners who are going, okay, so there's some sort of workout. We're doing tarot. So just to break it down for for someone who's like, oh my God, I got lost somewhere in the middle of like she said tarot and I'm still on that. So what exactly are the benefits of working with tarot? The the healing benefits that you have, the self-care benefits of working with tarot. And is it just tarot? Because somebody, somebody out there, of course, is going, well, does she do Oracle cards too? Or is it just strictly, I, I you know do what I mean? Oracle like do, some people, yeah. they don't like, they just think tarot and they're and it's like, I, I probably, I use way more Oracle than I do tarot. I started with tarot and I went way Oracle. So with your cards, yeah. What is that self-care benefit that you found that's so important? 
So the self-care benefit with the tarot is that as humans, we really are wired. I mean, there's, there's research attached to this, that when we look at pictures, when we look at images, our systems calm down. And so the tarot offers two, two routes, right? You can go from a very practical, systematic, like, I don't believe in the woo-woo of the tarot. Some people don't, right. but you can still utilize it as a tool that when we look at images, we are much more grounded. Our systems, our sympathetic nervous systems actually downregulate. And we are then able to sift, sort, feel, and integrate our way through our fear, confusion, excitement, happiness to process better. And so the tarot offers a hero's journey, right? I mean, Joseph Campbell. So right. we, we understand that story. The tarot tells that story card by card. So there are traditional meanings for the cards. And if you only went by the book and then just felt that calming sensation, this is a moment of pause, right? As humans, we go off in spiraling. And the tarot offers us a, well, have you thought about it this way? Right. And that's huge, mm -hmm. right? That's transformational in a super basic way. And then you have, for those who believe or have had that experience, which clearly I do, that there are, we can all do it. We all have intuition, but it's, you know, some do have a talent for it and can pull things through a little bit faster, a little bit bigger, you know, and that they are used as a tool of divination to channel messages from our guides, our guardian angels, our higher self. And so if we can bypass the cerebral fear thinking that has a spiraling and blocking out potential hope and healing and move us into a heart centric, a soul centric space and offer potential and possibility with the shift of perspective, right? right. I am in trust. I am safe at all times. I don't understand the storyline, but I know it's going to shake out. So hang in there. Or you human, you need to get some doing done. This hot mess is happening because you haven't handled your shit. Can I curse? <laughs> right, Sorry. of course, no. <laughs> yes, like, yes, yes. So, Cursing is so allowed. <laughs> the, the tarot to me, I mean, it is my calling. It is my tool. There's a lot of other tools out there, but this might just be the one. And I think it's so simple to pick up one card at a time. Just mm -hmm. what does that make you think of? Right. What lens does this add for mm -hmm. you? right? And so when it comes to tarot or Oracle, I always tell people to start with Oracle because it's so much more simple. It's right. just a, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yes. And I work with both, but the tarot is a longer relationship, you mm -hmm. know, because there is a history to it. There is a traditional reading, but then you can have intuitive reads that are a variation and, and that takes time to tune yeah. in my experience. Mm -hmm. And so that just has to be a, a calling and a want and a desire to cultivate a relationship with the tarot. But I use Oracle cards. If y'all see my Instagram, yeah. I've been pulling one a day lately for everybody because I'm having so much fun with this new deck. Yeah. And it's just a simple, if it resonates, it resonates. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Right. I love it. So do you have people that ever just go, hey, can, will you do a reading for me? Like... I you do. I would be shocked if you didn't, but you know, I have to ask. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Um, we've taken them, you know, off of the website as an offering the way things are right now in a blessed way. I have a wait list. That's about two months long for a reading. And I prioritize our members in that list first, because they're investing in the long-term work mm -hmm. of things. Um, and I am happy to do readings if someone, you know, requests it. And I feel like that's a fit, but the Unicorn Wellness Studio is, is a long game of, of self-evolution work. And I don't tend to do one-off work, right? It's right. for seekers who are like, oh, I'm feeling a three month to a 12 month kind of cycle here of like, I'm going to, I don't do quick fixes. I'll put it that way. <laughs> right, right. Well, and what a great time. I mean, with the way the world has been and the way we're transitioning, you know, for especially people out there that might have anxiety or they might like, there's just way too much going on to be able to ground yourself in such an incredible program and know, okay, this is something that's part of my life for the next four months. I may not know anything else going on for the next four months, but I have this, just that piece of grounding, I think could be so incredibly beneficial to people right now. 
Absolutely. And I've had, you know, a joke for the last couple of years of I've never made more sense than in a pandemic. And I truly believe that spirit was prepping me for this. Mm-hmm. You know, we'd already made a home. Our members, you know, when the original kind of lockdown came, they were so grateful that their process was not interrupted. And I did witness that they were much more grounded, much more mm-hmm. fluid in handling some of these things. Not to say that it was easier, simple, and myself included, but they had roots mm-hmm. and a foundation that was uninterrupted. And that was huge and still is. Yeah. What an incredible incredible opportunity that is just continuing to blossom. And especially as we go in, you know, forward down the years here, I mean, it's online education, you know, healing is exploding and that's awesome. That is such an incredible program that you have. Thank you. Yeah. It's really grown itself, you know, in so many ways of the foundation of the membership, then moving into one-on-one magical mentoring now we have group mentoring, you know, that, so again, an option for everyone of how it connects to them and helps. Um, yeah, it's just been a blessing. Yeah, that is super cool. So Tandy, we are getting to this time in the show where I ask this one question. Are you ready? I am ready. All right. What is one thing that no one knows about you? Boy, that's a pause one. I'm fairly transparent. Goodness. I don't really know. What if there's a little, there's gonna be a little something, a little something that's just for you. Maybe your husband knows, maybe the kids. This is one of those that I'm like, I really am so transparent. I don't know what it would be. I let me think. No one knows about me. Almost no one knows about you. Maybe it's Mm -hmm. something upcoming in life that you haven't shared. Maybe it's a newfound we well, haven't talked about. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Well, if we're going to go there, because I really am very can, transparent, yeah, particularly with my community and, yeah. and, and my friends and people. So I'm like, I blah about myself all the time. Um, so, okay. A silly thing and a real thing. Here we go. Um, I am fully contemplating a, well, this is the real thing, launching a podcast of my own. Yay. Congratulations. Yay. That's exciting. Happy to help you. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Um, that's one of those that I'm like, Oh, now I'm going to say it. I said it out loud. Um, but the silly thing is, is that, you know, if I could learn to do anything, I would learn to be a fire dancer. I think I've only told my husband that. Oh, I could totally see you doing that. Totally see you doing that. I think you'd be very good at it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what next year when we have our space. I was just thinking that I literally just saw a field and then there's trees (laughs) out there and then there's you. Yeah. So that's like my silly, I but think, I'm like, gosh, all of my shadows, I just dump them all the time. People yeah. know everything. <laughs> I think that that could become a very retreat-esque yes. situation is what I'm feeling coming. Right? Mm-hmm. Hands so down. So much fire in my chart. Oh, and, you know, I mean, Fire is just, magic and alchemy. I'm like, like goosebumps. Mm. Oh, yeah. Huge, 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 huge. Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> Hey, so excited for you. Thank uh, you for challenging me with that. Yeah. Like, how do people not know? It's so funny because you never know how well someone's going to take that question. Some people go really like introspect. Some people like just go way off and tell me things that have literally left me speechless and I didn't know what to say. Well, <laughs> so, I have but some I of love those that. for yeah. sure, but, I, but people know, you know yeah. what I mean? Like there's definitely things that I don't highlight all the time and I don't always offer because- not everyone's great at holding space. And like right. as the witch, like the wellness witch in me, I'm like, give me all your dark stuff. Cause like ain't nothing going to shock me, but you do say things out loud sometimes. And people you're like, and I just made you uncomfortable. Well, that's okay. Cause I'm okay to say, it. but right. like, but I also feel like I have been so transparent over the years. People really do, you know, you go digging. It's not like I'm hiding. I don't hide anything. Right. Like that's part of the deal. Thank you for challenging me with that. I love you. Well, that's awesome. I mean, and now, like, like I said, I promise. Yeah. If you need any help with the podcast, if you, if you go down the road this year, next year, I am happy to help you. This has been an incredible baby that I birthed this past year. And, uh, yeah, what a wild ride it's been (laughs) for sure. It's really been, it's one of those things that's been getting louder and louder. And I'm like, I have to carve space for it. And I'm not sure how to do that. We got a lot of spinning plates, Mm -hmm. you know? 
Yeah. So, um, but it, I feel, and this is what I love so much about being on podcasts. It's been very inspiring having real genuine conversations and getting into the longer dialogue instead of it just being blips on social, right? right. Like, right. It's right. And this is long and it's longevity and it's yeah. there and it's so value packed and it does, it takes a lot of time, but, and that's why, but I wait, put way more time into this than I ever do social media. It's, yeah. it's the podcast, it's the, the website, it's that kind of stuff because the social media is definitely a here today, gone tomorrow kind of thing. Well, it's evolved wink, wink. and I got to mm-hmm. be earnest, you know, that my, it's been 12, 13 years online, right? Like before we had a product to launch and I do start to feel like one, the old lady in the room where I'm like, I'm, I'm tired. Okay. Well, here's another one. Here we go. <laughs> I'm tired of trying to catch the algorithm or being gaslit that if you follow all the rules, it's like, I, I'm here to teach and I'm here to heal. And this is not resonating the way it once did. Mm-hmm. Right. And we all exactly things could be gone tomorrow. Things like, could be gone tomorrow. Hint, hint. I've been guiding clients for three years on this now. It's been very loud mm-hmm. that we need to at least have some alternative routes. Right. Yes. And we got some snippets of it because we've entered the age of Aquarius. So we've got right. this Aquarian energy of like, and, and the United States Pluto return. So it's like, <laughs> We need some more basics, like conversation, we basic need con- human it's connection. Gotta go, it's got to go backwards. Like during the yes. <clears throat> pandemic, people started having dinner together and yep. communicating. Yep. Everything is is headed in a backwards yet forward direction, yes. if that makes sense. Yes. Yes. Well, this- And I energetics- can't wait because I'm with you. Like I had someone call me this morning. She's like, why haven't you done any reels? I'm sorry. I really kind of don't have time. Like, I'm going to put it out there. I don't have time. So if somebody out there wants to do this for me, have at it. I God am like God bless you. the souls <laughs> that have an hour per reel. Because, <laughs> like, I, I've, I've come to a comfortable place of, I will do the ones that resonate with me, mm-hmm. that I feel like speak to what I teach, that feel like they've got some roots in them. And that's what I do. Because I did go running full force. And I'm like, Oh, I just, I'm not, I'm not a dancing monkey and I get it. And they're fun, but it's not where the work is. And I'm all for the fun and the play of it. And right. I will absolutely use and utilize technology. We're not going to get rid of our technology. Oh, no. I don't, yes. Right. It's but it is our vessels, it. our, our vessels are primal mm-hmm. and we need to always be checking in what's right for me. Right. Right. And so it's just this speed of of immaturity that comes with a very young country, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's just a lot. So I know it yeah, is. I got and a lot wanna... to say about it, but I'm well, like, I've had fun there and yes. built, definitely built some incredible relationships with people I might've not ever met. And for that, I am grateful. totally grateful. But for me, it's just that, that moment of like, Oh, what am I really doing here? And how does this serve healing and teaching? And does it resonate still, right? We get to change our minds right. at any time we want to, and we should, and we shouldn't be bound to things because of the shoulds, exactly. right? Because we can should all over ourselves, but we does could. it resonate? Right. Right. And is it just another distraction? And what are they distracting you from? Yeah. Ooh, but that's a whole exactly. nother podcast. <laughs> that's a whole nother podcast. I'm here for it though. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. I, I, I go down that rabbit hole. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Love totally. it. Oh my gosh. So Tandy, what one last piece of inspiration would you like to leave with our audience today? Oh, just leave a window for miracles and healing. I think in all of the busyness and the noise of life, we still want healing and miracles, but we're real quick to shut them down and not to see where the tiny ones are trying to edge their ways through the cracks. I'm definitely not a spiritual whitewasher. Like when shit's terrible, it's terrible. And we need to recognize it. We need to do the work to shift it. But sometimes that work to shift is knowing that all the ways that haven't fixed or solved something means we know all the ways we've checked off the list that don't work. So there's still something out there that can absolutely work and absolutely cultivate constructive change and healing. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. 
definitely resonates, and I'm sure that's going to resonate with so, so many of our listeners. Thank you for that. A wonderful reminder. And thank you for being on the show, for sharing your incredible journey and all of your fun stories and insights with us today. If you would like to connect with Tandy, head over to jenniferpilates.com. Check out the show notes and all of Tandy's links to her memberships and how you can follow her on social media will be there. You are welcome back anytime you'd like to come back and we can dive down a few other rabbit holes and have some more fun. <laughs> Let's do it. Yes. Thank you so much for having me today. Oh, well, thank you. And as we say, until next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Empowered Within with Jennifer Pilates. Your feedback is important. It helps me to connect with you and gives me insight into who you are and what you're enjoying about the show. For today's show notes and discount codes from today's sponsors, head over to jenniferpilates.com. Until next time, may you live an empowered life from within. <laughs>